Hi, this is Matt Drummond and welcome to my channel where I muse upon all things to do with film, post-production, animation, music and some other good stuff. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Golden Ratio and specifically how it applies to animation. When we talk about the Golden Ratio, most people think about its spatial characteristics such as spirals, sunflowers and other three-dimensional application of the math. However, the Golden Ratio also exists temporally in nature. The human heart is one such example. It includes the phase of contraction, systole, and the phase of relaxation, diastole. These phases adhere to the golden ratio of 1 to 1.618. The same is true of our breathing. The natural inhalation and exhalation of our breath also adheres to the golden ratio. These two elements of physiology form the engine room of our bodies which powers our locomotion. Now if we turn our attention to our most basic form of locomotion, we start to see some patterns emerge. Starting with the centre of gravity from which all primary inertia originates, we will look at the up and down motion. Over a 24 frame walk cycle, the COG will rise and fall twice, once with each foot stride over 12 frames each. If we slow this down, you can see a rise of 7 frames and a fall of 5 frames. This adheres to the golden ratio. Of course we're rounding here because we don't have subframes. Now let's turn our attention to the feet. Specifically, let's look at the contact phase versus the lift phase. There it is again. The contact phase is 15 frames and the lift phase is 9 frames. We also see that ratio again in the lift phase with the rise and plant of the feet. And I'll come to this again later. So, how do we apply this new knowledge to our own work? Before we go any further, let's talk about that age-old method that we were all taught. Pose to pose is great for blocking and planning, but when it comes to locomotion, it's actually pretty horrible. From the outset, it completely removes the natural arcs of movement and timing from the process in favour of static poses. It also results in a million redundant keyframes and requires hours of cleanup, and in production, time is money. So, if pose to pose is so bad, how do we go about it? I've developed an approach I call the inertia method. This method is based on the concept that all living things are constantly fighting gravity. Before we delve into the details of this method, we need to do some simple math. C equals cycle length. A equals C divided by 1.618, the golden ratio. B equals C minus A. So the first thing to do is simulate the inertia of the walk cycle, which in essence is a series of controlled falls. We do this by starting with the center of gravity, or COG. So the rise and fall will happen twice per 24 frame cycle. In applying the formula C equals 12, C divided by 1.618 equals 7.42. 12 minus 7.42 equals 4.58 for B. Rounding these results, we end up with a rise of 7 frames and a fall of 5 frames. Now, if you look at the curves here, we can see that I've also applied a gentle forward and backward motion shown in blue with the Translate Z channel. There's also a slight rocking in the Rotate X channel as well. If we have a look at the top view, we can see that the Rotate Y is there to simulate the forward stride of each foot. And there's a little side to side motion in the Translate X channel as well. Now we copy this motion to the head, the neck, the torso, abdomen, and tail, and we offset the keyframes for each. Everything forward of the COG will be delayed so that the head will roughly align itself along the center line. In Maya, this is the X coordinate. The abdomen will be offset ahead of the COG as the back feet lead in a quadruped. Now, once we've got that looking good, it's time to work with the feet. Rounded to the nearest frame, we get a contact phase of 15 frames and a lift phase of 9 frames. The lift phase will then be further divided into the rise and plant stages, where C will equal 9, A will equal 6, and B equals 3. Now, after doing some finessing where we deal with the details of the knee jolt, the foot roll, toe splay, and other characteristics, we're ready to copy, mirror, and offset the animation to the other feet. Now, some notes on the offsets. As I said before, in a quadruped, the back feet lead. 
Also, the back feet will often twist on the beginning of the lift phase, which gives the leg further length and prevents hyperextension in the knee joint. So as you can see, by applying the temporal aspects of the golden ratio with the inertia method, we're able to create far more natural animation using fewer keyframes in a fraction of the time of traditional pose-to-pose -pose methods.